fourth thing that we assume with KM theory is that there are no forces of attraction between particles. All the elastic, the collisions are completely elastic. This is a lie. This is a flat out lie. We're going to talk about a, a really fun chemist slash physicist name who, well, we'll get there. Okay, so I want to ask you a question before we go to that next slide. When we're, have any of you ever, pardon? It doesn't. Well, it could. Okay, everybody take your hand. One hand. Put it on your forehead. How do you feel? If you're, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're one of your parents came over and did this, what would they be checking? Your temperature. Have any of you ever taken your own temperature? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Have you ever taken the temperature of anything else? Like a water bath? Or a beaker full of oil? Yes. What are you measuring when you measure something's temperature? Good. Okay. Well, okay, so temperature is just a proxy. Do you know what a proxy is? Something that stands in for something else. So it's something that, that uh, is tied to and represents, uh, yeah. So we, when we measure temperature, temperature is a proxy for actually the average kinetic energy of those molecules. That's what you're measuring. So do you remember any equations about kinetic energy from physical science? It's one of the three equations the state of Ohio says you need to know. Oh, wait, you have it in your notes. You brats. You brats. Okay, yeah, fine, fine. What do you know? What do you know? Yeah, um, kinetic energy is equal to one-half mass velocity squared. So if temperature is an approximation of kinetic energy, if we've got two different gases, let's say we have hydrogen gas, and let's say we've got, let's name it, let's think of a heavier, heavy gas. Oxygen gas, O2. 30, 32 AMUs per molecule versus hydrogen, H2, which is what? 2.02. So 16 times as massive. All right. If they're at the same temperature, they have the same amount of kinetic energy. Well, if they have the same amount of kinetic energy, but they have radically different masses, then they must have radically different velocities also. Which do you think is going to move faster? Big, heavy, chunky oxygen or a little lightweight hydrogen? The lightweight hydrogen. Hydrogen is, hydrogen is the, I'm thinking wrestling. What's the lowest weight category? Okay, hydrogen is the 106 wrestler. Oxygen, on the other hand, and I'm thinking of former students who were in, like, big, heavy guys. Okay. Don't, don't have them in class, but yeah. That's the wrestler that oxygen is. If you, had to, if you had to get those two people to sprint, I know who I'd put my money on. Okay, well, we're not going to go into particulars. Every now and then we get big guys who are really fast, too. But um, in, in general, if we take... If we take a Honda Civic full of cotton balls and set it down next to a semi-truck load of cinder blocks, once you get it going, but, well, yeah, so, typically, heavier things are going to move more slowly. It's going to take, it's going to take longer to get them up to speed. They're going to accelerate more slowly. So heavier molecules move more slowly. Okay, those are our five assumptions. Now, basically what that does is those five assumptions explain how gases behave. You know that gases can expand to fill their container, right? They don't have a shape. So I have a balloon. I put gas into it. The balloon will expand until that gas fills its container. Um, it can also be shaped. So I've got my... Professor Mole balloon here. Woo, Professor Mole. No, I, I filled this with CO2 and water vapor and probably some sulfur compounds. But anyway, we can figure that out later. So I can compress this. Yes. Um, I can change its shape. 
If I change the shape too much, you got one of the, long the, the ones I should have made balloon animals. Yep. I'll keep that in mind for next year. Um, so, gases also will slide right past one another. They're a fluid. So are liquids. Liquids and gases are the two states of matter that we call fluids. And they, they flow. Has anybody here ever had this experience? Yes. This is homework. This is homework for the spring. You are, I know. You'll like this one. You'll like this. No. In the spring, when the days are starting to get warm, but the evenings are still really chilly and the nights are cold, you're going to go out someplace where there's a slope and a nice low area and an open field kind of environment. It may take some research. You may not be able, you may need to research this. It may take you a little spring to find the perfect setup. You're gonna well you need to find friends who, you know, have field, <laughs> fields and pastures and yards with little dips. There you go. And you're gonna you're gonna find one of those places and in the evening as the sun is setting, but before it's completely set, you're going to go out there, preferably with bare feet, <laughs> and you're going to walk down that hill until you get to that little area where maybe, maybe you're down near a stream, and you're going to notice that as you're walking, it feels like you're walking in a river. And what you're experiencing is cool air sinking and flowing downhill. And when you get to that low area, it's going to be significantly chillier than it was on the slope. So gases flow just like liquids do. And it's a fun little experiment. You find the right place. Doesn't it sound nice? Doesn't it sound like a... Probably has. Probably has. Not quite. But okay. Um, so we consider both of them to be fluids. All right. Um, gases are very, very low density. So you measured the density of olive oil in your last lab. What units did you use to measure it? Jot it down, don't yell it out. Wait, what? You measured the density, or you calculated using the density of olive oil. What units did you use for the density of olive oil? You mean on the test? On your lab, in your soap lab. Grams per some unit of volume. What do you have? Grams per cubed. I asked him. Grams per cubic centimeter. Grams per cubic centimeter. Or grams per milliliter. So a milliliter is, you know, this much space on your graduated cylinder. Tiny, tiny little pinch. Okay. Guess what we measure the density of gases in? Grams per liter significant. And that's because gases are not very dense. So we can have a whole liter of gas and it can have about the same amount of mass as a cubic centimeter of water or oil. Okay. Um, because of that we can compress gases and you owe a lot of stuff to that. Pneumatic systems of all sorts, from tires, the tires you probably got here on this morning, um, pumps, lifts, all sorts of neat things. Okay, now and I, I should have I should have brought in homework for me. So homework for me. I'm gonna get some onions. I'm gonna chop them up. I'm gonna get a skillet and some butter. And I'm gonna stand right up here. Doesn't this sound like the start of a good meal? I'm gonna stand right up here with my skillet and my butter and my onions and my little hot plate. And I'm going to saute them. That smells so good. So are you making dinner? Who's going to be the first one to smell this stuff after I do? I will be the first one to smell it. The dog. <laughs> In this room, right here, where I'm making my onions. Melissa. So I think Melissa's probably going to be the first one to go, hey, what are you cooking? Ooh. That smells good. And then, and then, Shannon will probably smell it. And then I guess that Clay and Anna will, will pick up the, the scent. Is, is there enough to smell it to share? That 
smells pretty good. And then Francis and David and, and Cooper will pick it up. And, and then Josh and the little man will pick it up. And then very last, probably Casey. And Thomas will probably be the, probably the last one to know that I'm making food up here. Poor kid, I'm Other sorry. Than Other than the sizzling. Well, why? Yeah. So, <laughs> why can Thomas smell the onions all the way over there? Because it travels. <laughs> because it travels. Okay. So, let's let's think about what the smell of onions is. Why do they make you cry? Sulfur compounds. It forms sulfuric acid in your eyes. Doesn't that sound really? nice? Yes. <laughs> okay. So, don't know. Um, probably dilution. Um, the smell of onions is actually just little physical particles of onion stuff, mostly sulfur compounds, that are carried in the air. So if I start out over here, chopping up my onions, sauteing my onions, in terms of concentration <coughs> of onion smell, there's a very high concentration of onion smell right here. The whole rest of the room is low concentration. Those onion smell particles, those sulfur compounds or whatever else, are going to travel through the air until they're equally distributed throughout the whole room. That's diffusion. And you studied this in biology. I think you guys are talking about it in biology right now. You're talking about diffusion in liquids, um, where we have a substance that moves from an area of high concentration out to, to, evenly, um, to be evenly distributed throughout. So gases diffuse. If you have siblings and you have taco night, you know about this. So, and they just let that one go. Amazing. Okay, that's good. That's for the best. I like that. Now, um, you guys are, we're going to, 